Krishna, very dear devotees, a warm welcome back again to our ongoing discussions on our beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Happy to have you with us. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Goravani Pacharine, Nipishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschata Deshatarne. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, I was thinking uh, today that because we have recently spoken about four of the Astasakis, uh, Lalita, Vishaka, Chitradevi, and Champakalata, it would be proper to uh, also speak in the next few days about the remaining four Sakis, uh, Induleka, Tungavidya, Rangadevi, and Sudevi. Um, as we all know, the Asasakis are so important in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. Some of you may know that actually there's a very famous temple here in Sri Vrindavan Dham dedicated simply to these eight very dear maidservants of Radha and Krishna. It's down near uh, Keshigat, and that temple's, I think it's around 350 years old. There's beautiful deities of Radha and Krishna, and Four sakis on one side of them and four sakis on the, on the other side. And um, my god sister Jamuna Devi um, once said that Prabhupada had told her that he uh, originally wanted the uh, Astasakis to be installed in our uh, Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan along with uh, Radha Shamasundar. But unfortunately, that um, altar area was uh, too small. But of course, we know that Prabhupada's desire was ultimately fulfilled when the Astasakis were installed in our Mayapur temple, along with Sri Sri Radha Madhava. So today, <coughs> we'll talk about Induleka Saki and include a special pastime about her as we have done recently with other Sakis. But uh, first, a brief review about her. <laughs> um, 5,000 years ago, during uh, Krishna's pastimes on earth, Induleka appeared in the village of Indroli, Indroli, which uh, is actually not far from Kamyavan. Her father's name was Sagar, and her mother's name was Veladevi. And the Acharyas say that uh, Veladevi gave birth to, quote, a contrary and hot-tempered little girl whom um, she and her husband named Induleka because she was like a moon, Indu, beam, Leka, Induleka. Now, Induleka was born uh, three days after Srimati Radharani, and she's actually famous as the sixth of the Astasakis. And I was reading that she has a, a tan complexion. She wears clothes as reddish as sunrise, or sometimes described as uh, the color of a pomegranate flower. Now, as a child, she learned uh, gemology, the science of gems, and the science of palmistry. Now, as far as uh, gemology is concerned, I, I read in the Institute that um, uh, when Krishna and Balaram were in the Gurukul of Santipani Muni, they also learned everything about Vedic gemology. That's called uh, Ratna Shastra in the Vedas, Ratna Shastra which is actually one of the 64 Vedic arts. And um, I was remembering that in his later years, when Srila Prabhupada was very ill, he wore a, a five-carat blue sapphire, the color of a peacock's chest, I think you could say, as was advised by um, a Jyotis Acharya at that time. So, you know, it's part of our culture, gemology. We use it in various different ways. So. Now, uh, Induleka also learned when she was young how to uh, decorate teeth, chant mantras, charm snakes, and string necklaces. 
as well as a weave cloth from very fine silk fibers. And um, in her specific village, which is called Anjanoka, remember each of the Sakis have their own particular villages, villages around um, Varshana, where she, Shimati Radharani, their queen, is living. So her village is called Anjanoka, and it's in the forest of Anjanavana, next to Varshana. And she is known as the leader of her friends, such as uh, Tunga Badras, a close friend of Induleka, and Palin Dika. Palin Dika. These two are very close to Induleka. And Induleka taught them and uh, uh, other friends of hers to be uh, skilled messengers in service to the divine couple. And by thus facilitating uh, Radha and Krishna's communications, Induleka essentially increases the divine couple's mutual love. And consequently, the cowherd girls throughout Braja come to Induleka for guidance in devotional service because this is the essence of the seva of the sakis and the manjaris and the gopis is to unite Radha and Krishna. They don't like to see them separated and to bring them together. So because Induleka is so good at this, um, many of the girls, all all the cower girls actually, come to her for uh, guidance in devotional service. And she engages these enthusiastic, you know, pure-hearted girls in fulfilling Radha and Krishna's desires. She also teaches them to make ornaments, uh, to sew garlands, and I read in, in one place, to oversee the divine couple's treasury. <laughs> and um, one time, Radha and Krishna were uh, playing a game of riddles. We often hear how they play this game of riddles. And at this particular uh, occasion, Krishna asked Radharani, quote, who shows passionate redness when she appears, is very expert in various arts, and arouses uh, amorous desires upon first sight, unquote. So pausing for a moment, Shimati Radharani, she you know, glanced at the faces of her gopi friends and her glance fell on Indulekasaki. So she pointed to her and she said excitedly, it is my divine moonbeam, Induleka. It is my divine moonbeam, Induleka. <laughs> That's how he entitled this lecture, her divine moonbeam, Induleka. <clears throat> Also, it's interesting to note that in his uh, eternal identity as Rati Manjari, Rati Manjari, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is a maidservant, a maidservant of Induleka. In fact, in one of his poems, he prays to her as follows, quote, my guru, Induleka instructs me in the art of making beautiful garlands of pearls, jewels, gunja berries, and flowers so that I can decorate Radha and Krishna in the temple at the center of Radha Kund." Unquote. Now, uh, speaking about Radha Kund, in Radha Kund's uh, southeastern corner, is Induleka's uh, grove, or her, her kunja. It's called Purnendu Kunja. Again, the, uh, each of the Astasakis, they have their groves or their kunjas around Radha Kun, whereby they serve uh, Shimachi Radharani. So Induleka's kund, is, or kunj, is called Purnendu Kunja. It's named like that for its resemblance to the full moon, and for possessing uh, a whiteness that the Acharyas say exists because the ground is made of diamond dust which reflects the light of both the sun and the moon, making anything and everything in that kunja effulgent, like really effulgent, with a soft white glow. It's almost blinding. <laughs> I read that... Uh, since the bees and the parrots there are all white, like everything's white in that kunja, they can only be identified by their sounds. 
difficult to see them, but you know they're there when the bees buzz and the parrots, the parrots uh, sing. They can be identified only by their sounds. And it's said that uh, on a full moon night, if anyone accidentally wanders into that grove, while the gopis, who are also dressed in white, are entertaining um, uh, Radha and Krishna, that person will see nothing but glaring white light. It's so effulgent. <laughs> and there's actually a detailed description of Purnendu Kunj in uh, Govinda Leelamrita, chapter 7, uh, verses 81 to 84. And I'll, I'll quote that reference. Quote, in the Agni Kona, which means the southeast direction of Radhakund, is a kunja named Purnendu, uh, meaning full moon, Purnendu, uh, which bestows uh, unlimited happiness upon Induleka. The exteriors of this kunja are decorated with spatikamani. Spatikamani means uh, clear crystals. And chandrakanti mani, meaning natural moonstones. It goes on to say, all the trees, creepers, bumblebees, and birds around this kunja are pristine white in color, as we discussed. Hare Krishna. Now finally, we also found in a shastra called Sadhana Mrita Chandurika. Sadhana Mrita Chandrika, second chapter, text number 23, Indu Lekas Prana Mantra, <laughs> which I will recite for you. Quote, O Sri Radhika, I glorify your friend Induleka Saki, who regularly celebrates a festival of dance, whose complexion is brighter than Haritala, whose clothes are of the complexion of the reddish pomegranate flower, and who wins over the brilliance of the rays of the moon by her own effulgence." Unquote. Her prana mantra. <laughs> so, um, now for uh, our main pastime uh, of the day. It's actually a pastime, I'm told, by the local Brajabhasis, uh, is celebrated each year on the appearance day of Induleka Saki in her village next to Varshana. They celebrate this appearance day by singing about this pastime, chanting about this, but lecturing about this pastime. And I've heard they also have theatrical productions with the following pastime. So it's very popular in her village. So <clears throat> one evening, Radha and Krishna met on the banks of the sacred Jamuna River. And after a few minutes, Radha said to Krishna, My dear Krishna, uh, today Induleka Saki made a special effort to dress and decorate me for our rendezvous. So stepping back to appreciate the service of Induleka, Krishna said, uh, Dearest Radha, I have no words to describe the opulence of your detailed shringar. Remember, shringar means decorations. And he continued. He said, Radha, your chin looks like a shallogram sleeping on the moon. Your long eyelashes capture me with your beautiful dark eyes. Your teeth defeat the beauty of a string of pearls, and the flowers in your dark hair put to shame the stars in the sky at nighttime. So Sri Radha asked, Dear Krishna, just how do you perceive my face? So Krishna replied, this is interesting, Krishna said, Dearest Radha, your face is like Chandra. Your face is like Chandra, the moon. By remembering your face, my burning heart is cooled when I am separated from you. Because we know, we've all heard how the moon, moon rays are very cooling at nighttime. Someone's burned by the sun, then they can go out in the evening and the 
somehow the moon rays are very cooling. So Krishna said, by remembering your, your face, my burning heart is cooled when I'm separated from you. Your face is just like the moon. However, Shirada was not happy with Krishna's response. Not at all. And she said, Krishna, why do you compare my face to Chandra, the moon? The moon has five faults. So Krishna was a little confused. <laughs> and he said, what are those faults, dear Radha? So Radharani replied, well, number one, uh, Chandra the moon is called Nishakar. It means one who stays awake <laughs> all night. <laughs> Secondly, he's called Vishbindu. Vishbindu. Vish means uh, poison. So uh, the moon appeared from water mixed with poison during, during the churning of the milk ocean. We've heard of that pastime. When the devas and the demons churned uh, the milk ocean, many things came out, and one was the moon. So he was, at one point, that ocean was mixed with poison. Hala, hala. So he's Vishbindu. He appeared from water mixed with poison. So thirdly, she said, uh, the moon is Vakra. Vakra means uh, who is tilted. Like if you look at the moon, you see the man in the moon, as we say in English. A little tilted, right? The moon's a little tilted. So she said, he's Vakra, he's tilted. Then she said, the fourth uh, fault of Chandra is that he's Sanik. Sanik means he, uh, he wanes. We talk about the, the waning moon. After the full moon, each day he wanes, he gets smaller. So she said, this is a fault. And she said, and the, Chandra's fifth fault is that he's Kalanka. 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 He becomes dark on every Amavasya. You know, the, the dark day of the moon. The moon wanes and wanes, and the last, he becomes a little sliver. So Kalanka, that's his fault. He wanes. So she continued, she said, so you tell me, Krishna, how my beauty is comparable to the moon? So Krishna replied, my beloved Radharani, you misunderstood me. And she said, and how so? So Krishna said, I was referring to the five good qualities of Chandradev. So then he listed those. <laughs> he said, Chandra is called Ujvala Prema Vardaka, which means he who increases the love between two persons. You know how lovers look at the moon. <laughs> so Krishna said, he who increases the love between two persons, like you and me. He gave the best example of divine love, topmost love, like you and me. Then Krishna said, his second good quality is that he's Jal Sankar, Jal Sankar, meaning the ocean feels pleasure seeing the moon. Similarly, I feel pleasure seeing your moonlike face. He's trying hard here, Krishna. And then he said, thirdly, Chandra's good quality is that he's Ashodhi Vardhaka, Ashodhi Vardhaka, which means that the moon. Uh, nourishes medicinal herbs by its cooling rays. And this is part of uh, Ayurvedic science. It's a well-known fact amongst Ayurved physicians that the medicinal herbs in the forest or the jungle, somehow they're nourished by the rays of the moon. So Krishna said, similarly, you nourish my virarasa, rasa, which means like his fighting rasa, when I kill asuras. Just looking at you, I'm inspired to to kill the rascals. <laughs> so fourthly, he said, um, the, the moon, the, a good quality of the moon is that he's uh, tapani uh, varaka. Tapani varaka means that uh, Chandra removes the scorching heat of the day by his moonbeams at night. Just like by remembering your face, Radha, the burning heat of separation is removed from my heart. 
So then the fifth, what was the fifth? Oh yeah, the fifth one is, the fifth good quality Krishna said about the moon is that he's Rasa Vardhaka. He's Rasa Vardhaka Radharani. He increases the Rasa in the hearts of lovers. He increases love in the hearts of lovers. Just as you, my dear Radha, increased the love of all the residents of Vrindavan for you with each passing day. So Krishna thought he had her convinced. <laughs> he was just speaking about, you know, using the analogy of Chandra and her face to, in, in a good way, these five good ways. So then Krishna, he, he, he looked up to the moon, looked up towards the moon, and he, he said, Dearest Radha, just see the beautiful rays of the moon as they cascade down upon the water of the Jumuna. Can you see like that? And he paused for her reply, <laughs> but no reply came. <laughs> Krishna turned around, and he looked back and he noticed Radharani was no longer there. She had left him alone on the banks of the Jamuna. The Charya say because of his comparison of her face to Chandra the moon, it had simply been too much for her despite his attempts to appease her. So what he did is he went and he sat down under the shelter of some nearby Kadamba trees where the moon rays were coming through the branches which were full, it's described of yellow Kadamba flowers similar to Shirada's complexion. It gave him some solace and he cried and he cried and he cried in pangs of separation, Vipralamba Bhav. And then after some time, he got up and he began looking for her in the forest. So, sometime later, our heroine, today our heroine is Enduleka Saki, our heroine was passing through the forest where Krishna was searching uh, for Sri Radha. And as he was searching, he was crying calling out her name. So Induleka came up to, to Krishna and she said, Krishna, what's wrong? So Krishna said to Induleka Saki, earlier I compared Shivada's face with Chandra the moon and she became angry and left me all alone in the forest. So Induleka said, hmm, you definitely made a big mistake, Krishna, comparing her incomparable beauty to the limited beauty of the moon. In fact, you could have saved yourself had you quoted Lord Shiva, who once said, and I quote, Sada Dendu Mandale, he said, Sada Dendu Mandale, the moon is beautiful, and in the winter season, the moon looks even more beautiful. But if I combine the beauty of millions of winter moons, I will be unsuccessful in defining the beauty of Srimati Radharani's face. <laughs> like I said, you should have quoted Lord Shiva. <laughs> so then she said, but Krishna, a, a far graver mistake was invoking the very name of Chandra. For as you know, Chandravali is Radharani's chief rival amongst the gopi women of Braj. So Krishna lowered his head, <laughs> realizing his mistake. And he said to Indulekha, Indulekha, I will worship your feet with these Kadamba flowers if you can please help me find my Srimati Radharani and, I can, and pacify her. Pacify her ma and her anger. So Indulekha said, Shamasundar, I will try my best because this is, the, again, the essence of the gopi service to bring the divine couple together. And then she left to find Srimati Radharani. So several hours later, she did find Srirada alone under a banyan tree. And what was Srirada doing? Well, she was singing Krishna's names it's described as tears cascaded down her cheeks. Divine love. 
And then suddenly, to Induleka's surprise, Sri Radha assumed the form of Krishna, or you could say she appeared as Krishna himself. And Induleka said, Sri Radha, <laughs> you look identical to Krishna in every way. So then Sri Radha, you could say, disguised as Krishna, you know, she assumed that form, but at, like a disguise. She said, yes, Induleka, and may I ask you, where is Radharani? Radharani is asking, where is Radharani? Radharani, in the form of Krishna, of course. So Induleka said, well, well I'm not sure now. <laughs> I'm not sure now, <laughs> but I am sure that the real Krishna is looking for her, looking for you, Radharani. And if you'd like, we could go together to find him, wherever he's searching. So just try to envision this. The two of them left, Induleka and Radharani, looking identical to Krishna. They're going to look for Radharani. So after some time, they actually found Krishna, you know, wandering in the forest, looking for Sri Radha, calling out her name. And, um, but when Krishna saw Induleka, and then Krishna <laughs> himself standing next to Induleka, he was confused. He came up to Radharani, disguised as himself, and he said, this is odd. Who are you? You look exactly like me. What are you doing here? So Radharani, disguised as Krishna, replied, I am searching for Sri Radha. Do you know where she is? Can you tell me where she is? So at this point, Krishna showed his loyalty to Srimati Radharani, which is what she was looking for, really. And he replied angrily, Whoever you are, you cannot search for Sri Radha because Radharani belongs solely to me. Why are you searching for her? So Radha, disguised as Krishna, answered, No, Radha is mine. Why are you searching for her? So at this point, Krishna just, you know, seeing this person <laughs> looking like him in front, he looked deeply into that person's eyes to try to figure out what was going on. And looking deep into the eyes of that person, he saw Radharani's love for him which you would often see by gazing into her eyes. So at that point, he understood what was going on. <laughs> and he shouted, Radharani, I found you, I found you. You are none other than my Radha, for some reason disguised as me. So now having witnessed Krishna's intense love for her, more than any other gopi, more than Chandravali, <laughs> Radharani gave up her anger which was the result of, you know, Krishna's comparing her face to the moon and also, you know, mentioning Chandravali's name. Everything was resolved now. Krishna proved his allegiance and love for her. So, whew, she assumed her real form. Taptakanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari. So then, now we have Radha and Krishna united again. And they embraced each other. But that's not the end of the pastime. Because Krishna wanted to have a little fun. So he said to Sri Radha, please make that disguise again. <laughs> please assume my, my form again. And the two of us, let's go visit your Sakis at Saki Mandala. Let's see if they can recognize uh, who's the real Krishna and who's pretending to be Krishna. It will be a lot of fun. So Radharani, she assumed that form, identical to Krishna. And the two Krishnas <laughs> with Induleka, they went to Sakimandala. When I heard that name, I thought, that is such a beautiful name for some devotee. I put it on my list there of uh, names for initiation, Sakimandala. They went to Sakimandala, the place where uh, Radharani's Sakis often gather speak about Radha and Krishna. And um, when they arrived, 
um, they asked the assembled sakis, can you say who is the real Krishna? <laughs> because one's a pretend Krishna. <laughs> but initially, none of the sakis could recognize who was actually Krishna, because Krishna was very adamant. I am Krishna, but Radharani, disguised as Krishna, she was equally as adamant. No, I am Krishna. However, it's described that the Sakis felt they could resolve the issue because they knew secrets about Krishna that Krishna had only shared with them. And similarly, they knew secrets about Radha that Radha had only shared it with them. So by re revealing those secrets in their investigation, they will be able to identify who's who. However, <laughs> this is Braj. <laughs> However, anticipating such a scenario, Radha and Krishna had already shared all of their secrets, each and every one, with each other. This is love. This is divine love. This is the perfection of love. They, they shared everything with each other. So the Sakis were unable to discover who was who, as they questioned the divine couple. So time, it was getting a little late, so <laughs> finally our heroine, our heroine, Induleka Saki, she stepped forward and she revealed, this is the original Krishna and this is Radha, who has temporarily assumed the form of Krishna. So as soon as Radha heard that, she assumed her most beautiful form and all of her gopis immediately surrounded her their queen, and began chanting her glories with great joy and happiness. And then all the gopis, seating uh, Radha and Krishna on a golden throne, they had aurati, and they were singing their glories, and they worshipped the divine couple, happy to see them united again in their loving pastimes. What a pastime. Shishi Radha Sham Sundar Ki, the Asta Sakis of Braj Ki, Induleka Saki Ki, Shirapawapa, the revealer of the Dham Ki. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that fast. I enjoyed it. <laughs> so let us um, conclude today with um, two verses from Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati's Vrindavan Mahima Murita. It's from the chapter uh, Navanam Shatakam, uh, glorifying Vrindavan Eshwari um, Shimati Radharani. And it also mentions the um, Saki's service to her. So two very, very beautiful verses. So I begin. <clears throat> May Radha who makes Vrindavan her ornament, who sprinkles all directions with huge waves from the ocean of pure golden beauty, who completely bewilders everyone by her new youth, her intense love, her skills and beauty, whose body is made of prema, who gives life to Krishna, manifest in my heart at all times. Victory to Shirada, deep with the essence of prema. Victory to Krishna, thirsty for her incomparable love. Victory to the group of pure sakis who bring them together. Victory to the forest where they reside. Sri Brajabhumi, Sri Vrindavan Dham, it's 12 forests, Kijai. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> so, um, yes. Um, go back to my studies and I'll be back in a couple of days uh, with the glories of another one of our remaining sakis, three sakis, and a special pastime in her seva to the divine couple, Shishi, Radha, and Krishna. Thank you so much. Shishi Gornitai ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar ki, Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radha Rani ki, Shishi Gornitai ki, Shri Mayapur Dham ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya ki, the chanting of the holy names ki, 
transcendental book distribution ki shila prabhu pare ki gaur premanandi jay jay sri sri radhe